Hello and welcome to our panel discussion on Telco Cloud and end-to-end -end automation. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. Telco Cloud is designed to host multiple applications which primarily provide real-time services with specific requirements. End-to-end -end automation is designed to automate all processes from software onboarding and validation to configuration and rollout. By putting these two together, you create a single solution that can greatly assist a telco by increasing the rate of innovation for its customers. Well, to explain more, I'm joined by Christoph Hiltz, who is Group Head Voice and Messaging DevOps at Deutsche Telekom, Matthias Kokot, who is VP Product Management at Juniper Networks, Rolf Eberhardt, who is Head of Orchestration, Communications and Media Solutions at HPE, and Azar Said, who is Chief Architect Service Provider at Red Hat. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking part in our discussion today. Christoph, let me start by asking you, what exactly do we mean by telco cloud and end-to-end -end automation? I think that's that's a very good question, and I think we can spend half an hour just uh, on the answer. But I try to do it short. I think first of all, let's say telco clouds. Let's start with telco cloud. I think telco cloud really helps to to disaggregate in in our core network, moves away really from the silo uh, deployments which we have done in the past. And we all know that really telco at the end, on top of the cloud, telco applications are different to IT uh, compared to IT applications, as they primarily really provide real-time services, and, and that's the difference. So there are differences in stability and, and robustness. So that's the, the telco cloud part. But the end-to-end -end automation, it is really designed to automate all processes and that's really where the end starts and where the end ends so it's really from software onboarding in the lab through the test case execution but also the later rollout and uh, we in, in dt we really name that radical and brutal automation and the topic i think automation has been a hype let's say for for a long time now but if you have a look into the products and the implementations which you can see around uh, the world yes it's automation but it's not end to end eh? that's always focusing on individual uh, pillars it's for instance on test execution and the different is on planning and the different one is on, on software updates but there's no real end to end and we are looking at at a full end to end through the whole chain and both together, and uh, therefore I think the, the question is great, both together, telco cloud and end-to-end -end, uh, automation, that fits perfectly together. And the telco cloud as an enabler, together with the automation, really brings the benefit uh, to us as an operator. Rolf, we heard there from Christoph, but what about you as a vendor? Do you see telco cloud and end-to-end -end automation in the same way and working together in the same way? Absolutely. End-to-end uh, -end automation is what will make the, uh, the telco industry you know, really evolve. You'll be starting from services which you can decompose into individual building blocks and manage them through an uh, a life cycle, as Christoph was saying, from, from, from cr uh, cradle to the grave in a flexible way, driven by the business logic which the operations of um, a Deutsche Telekom would have to have. And if you don't have end-to-end -end automation, a zero touch is not feasible and, and, and not, not effective for, for the end customer. And Matthias, what is the benefit for the operator to have such a radical end-to-end -end automation approach? Yeah, what we've done, what we've supported and implemented at Deutsche Telekom is a game-changing implementation of the lifecycle automation for all telco cloud and uh, application workloads. You know, starting from, you know, day zero NFVI automation to, you know, day one and day two application, you know, lifecycle management. Zero touch, basically zero touch deployment across an end-to-end, -end, um, you know, CICD, you know, pipelines. Um, enabling basically a zero touch, um, you know, closed loop, you know, day one and day two, you know, operations. You know, think of it, you know, this way, um, you know, from a time to market perspective, the ability for, you know, Deutsche Telekom 
to um, you know roll out you know test and roll out you know new services um, in in a relatively you know short time frame without you know the traditional you know overhead that's um, involved when it comes to you know release you know testing releases you know and, and so forth. It's also a stepping stone when it comes to you know moving into you know the real cloud native you know environment. Um, that enables again, you know, Deutsche Telekom, you know, to um, roll out, you know, services really, really fast. And Azar, are there any examples of this you can share with us? Absolutely, uh, Guy. I think um, Matthias laid out a few objectives. I mean, NIMS I see as a prime example of an open source model collaboration, right, between multiple partners and customers. And using this, you encourage and promote collaboration in this industry and, and deploy really new technologies that can speed up innovation. And here's a best example of innovation, right? DT set out some really high goals in the beginning of the NMS project to build a horizontal telco cloud, to you know do some brutal automation and support live and continuous upgrades on that platform without any service interruptions, acquiring the whole knowledge in this particular context. And initial target, if you see what they did was uh, there were, it was three months from requirement specification to rollout, um, and then two days from code delivery to production. And so if you look at that framework in which they created, basically they reduced the whole time spent on the platform rollout from 220 days to down, down to about two days. With those kind of goals, you can't achieve those goals when that level of complexity when you're involving multiple different platforms, multiple different products from different companies and platforms and building that horizontal approach, you can't do that without hyper automation uh, because of that complexity and the scale. So it was only possible through that end-to-end -end automation. And uh, this is actually from the start of infrastructure initialization to open stack deployment, to onboarding of the network functions, to you know, configuring the SDN uh, services and models and then monitoring and troubleshooting that entire life cycle of that particular product. Now, ultimate goal obviously is to cut down on service uh, you know, uh, deployment time, make services available much faster, make that completely zero touch, do compliance checks through automation. These are all some really important points that automation brings. And we've seen that with some of the other providers, but this is a prime example of what DT has done through NIMS project. Thank you, Azar. And let's build on that for a moment. Um, what would you say are the technical and work process challenges faced when implementing this solution? Because, you know, you've had multiple vendors and architecture that's been defined by an operator. Yeah, any project of this magnitude or complexity isn't without challenges, right? I mean, you were talking about really large scale deployment, high, super aggressive or hyper or what DT calls it, brutal automation, right? Um, you have to work very closely with the DT engineering team, with our partner engineering teams to bring together and have a very clear understanding of what the objectives are, what the goals are and how that software stack is being built and how it's going to be, uh, you know, um, deployed and what's the order of execution, right? So you have to really get all the ducks in a row in the context of lifecycle management, in the context of deployment timelines, in the context of really getting all of these. Through this process, we have learned actually a number of things ourselves. And I can cite those, I'll take this upon myself, and I'm sure uh, both HPE and, and um, Juniper would have a lot to add. Juniper was the, you know, really playing the primary role in terms of the architect around this. Um, we had to improve things like software update execution optimizations, right? How long does it take we have it to really literally re-engineer some processes to provide parallel execution so that we could meet the goals and the timelines that DT had said. Things like how you would deploy certain things, for example, from a remote registry to a local registry. So move the registry to hold it locally so that you can get access to the images much faster. Um, all this resulting in literally um, several hours of savings in terms of deployment, because what DT wanted to really do was update, deploy and update very, very fast, eliminate completely the, uh, um, you know, the scheduled maintenance time and night times and so on and so forth. So we had to actually validate all of those things beforehand and get that into a production environment, improving overall the um, life cycle of this. We still have more to do, I would say. Uh, we still have more to learn through this process, through our partners, through um, with DT's help. 
and what we bring to the table is our expertise and our experiences through uh, with other partners and NIMS has really allowed us to showcase what we can do collaboratively and how we can learn from each other and actually make it better um, in terms of adoption. Matthias, as, as I said, Juniper is the prime integrator of the project. So what were the challenges that you faced? Yeah, so Deutsche Telekom, you know, defined the, you know, the architecture, as you mentioned, you know, Juniper came in as, um, you know, the prime integrator, you know, bringing in all the DevOps, you know, methodologies, um, you know, that are required in a project, you know, such as the Deutsche Telekom, um, you know, NIMS, um, you know, project. Traditional, you know, methods, um, you know, waterfall, you know, methods wouldn't have worked. Um, so we had to introduce an agile, you know, DevOps um, methodology, you know, here. You know, some of the challenges, um, you know, that you face in uh, telco cloud, you know, projects or transformation projects, you know, like that are actually in the nature of, um, um, you know, the project itself. It's um, telco cloud is all about, you know, disaggregation, um, you know, they are a multi-vendor. Um, you know, ecosystem, enabling, um, you know, all the vendors basically, you know, to work, um, you know, together in an agile way is one of the prime, you know, challenges, um, you know, that we faced. And I think actually we've succeeded, you know, quite well in, in, in mastering, you know, them. We not only um, um, did it for, let's say, the first, you know, set of deliverables, the phase one, um, you know, deliverables in, in Deutsche Telekom DIMS, but we also defined the methodology and the framework, um, you know, that would allow us to um, introduce and address, you know, some of the challenges that um, will come up um, in, a, in a phase two and in a phase three. And so we created, you know, something that we call the co-creation, um, uh, you know, program that allows us as an ecosystem, um, basically, you know, to come together and address the challenges, you know, that we faced. Thank you. And Rolf, why is this solution so revolutionary? And also, I guess, a potential blueprint for the future of the telecoms industry? I believe the revolution began the first time I met Christoph and the DTAC team, because they came in and that was the first time I'd seen it with clear sets of KPIs covering the entire life cycle. So they covered design time KPIs and runtime KPIs. And to be honest, this was the first time I had seen an operator going in with such a holistic approach. And this alone in itself is, is revolutionary. You see it in, you know, in many other partners in the industry, but as pronounced was definitely the first time with NIMS. The second thing, which is really beautiful about the overall solution, it is a, a proper implementation covering all the facets, design time, run time, uh, bringing software from from suppliers into production into the life cycle run this is this is absolutely unique around it and that's i guess that's one of the big differentiators towards other other blueprints which you've so seen and and then last one may, and maybe christoph can follow up on it is the term washing machine it's uh, what i really liked about the project is very simple terminology washing machine, for example, to show how the CICD process will, will, will cover the entire uh, life cycle. Brutal automation in a way of explaining how we want to radically change the way operations work. These kind of elements, in addition to the technology brought in by the suppliers, is really making the difference for NIMS. Thank you, Rolf. I, Christoph, tell us more about the washing machine. Uh, perhaps I, I would like to add uh, uh, really something to to the question, and then I will come back to the washing machine. Uh, why do I think why do I think that that's a blueprint? Um, I think from my perspective, that problem and the challenges which we really were faced, that's not a DT specific uh, a challenge. So I spoke a lot with other tier ones around the globe, and and I shared my ideas or the ideas of Deutsche Telekom with NIMS up front. And they all shared the, the challenges. They all said, yes, we have the same issues, uh, mainly due to legacy. And most of them said, hey, cool respect, cool approach. And that would also solve my problems. And parts of them really said, hey, but my managers, they don't want to go for the risk of disaggregation at the moment because there's no, no blueprint, no, no one who has shown that it works. Uh, so no working examples so far. Uh, give me a call when it works. 
So this is at the end something really which makes me confident that, that this is a blueprint because it will not just solve the DT issues, it may also solve uh, or will also solve problems uh, uh, from other operators. And now coming back to the washing machine, it's again one of the examples uh, where I think we spend a lot of brain or brain thought inside uh, the, the concept. The washing machine is at the end the idea of not having five unsuccessful run of, uh, of uh, test releases in our lab. The washing machine means we have a continuous washing of software code on a daily basis, which at the end, I'm always using the example of a trouser. If you wear your trouser uh, several weeks, uh, also a one-time wash will not solve, will not make it pro proper. So at the end, you, you have to do that on a daily basis. And that's the idea of the washing machine. That's the the end-to-end -end automation is the key for that. So checking in the software on a daily basis, doing the regression tests, giving feedback to our suppliers, and that's done on a daily basis. And, and that's at the end, uh, the washing machine. Very impressive. Look, Christoph, um, you, you spoke about the importance of, of blueprints here. Can you summarize what you've achieved and your partners together have achieved here? Yeah, I think I think there are, there are several several points where which i think is 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 important which are important which is the key to victory i think the first thing is definitely let's say a horizontal disaggregated telco cloud is real and it really solves uh, the problems uh, which which we had in the past the second thing is end-to-end -end automation is key and uh, as Rolf said you need to consider it from day one on you can't do that later on. It must be part of the DNA of the design from day one on. And absolutely important for all software parts. So it's not just relevant for the application part. You need to do that for the whole stack, all parts of software, routers, switches, and also the uh, remaining NFVI parts, the whole ecosystem. The third thing is you have to have the right team. That's internally, but you also need to have the right partners. Right team, of course, means a team who believes in challenging visions and also want to transform it uh, to, to reality. And the partner, you need to have great partners who contribute with their excellence because everyone has his center of excellence there. And they need to act really as hungry suppliers. And I confirm it has, it has been a really great team up to now. And thanks to all my partners so far, it's really fun doing that project together with them. Fourth, I think um, all together, um, the whole package will give us as the operators. So one, two, and, and, and point number three will give us the steering wheel back because we can break up the vendor log. We have a much more faster time to market and we have a fully automated zero touch network. And uh, finally, I think that's, that's my point with all these topics. It's just the beginning of the journey. So we are starting at the moment. It's not the end and there is more to come and we will proudly continue. That's very good to hear. For now, to all of you, thank you all very much indeed for participating in the program. Now, for the complete picture on the NIMS project, please do take a look at the other videos in this series. There'll be several interviews plus two panel discussions that delve deeper into the telco cloud. And watch out for news of our live Q&A program that's coming very soon. For now though, thank you for watching and goodbye.